It's time for Mornings at 8 with Jonathan Mark on AM 1480 WLEA. Yes, it is time for Mornings at 8, and uh, here we are. Thursday, Thursday, practically Friday. One more day, and Yahoo, there is the weekend. Boy, is this weather unseasonable or what? This is the wettest and coolest I can remember in June. I mean, like, ever. Okay, anyway, uh, where was I? Yes, um, hmm. As you heard uh, on Brian's News there, the Assembly has approved the uh, driver's licenses for illegal immigrants and next to goes to the, uh, of the Senate. And they still, now the current session ends next Wednesday in Albany, and they have a full plate, a full lineup of things that they still must address, or at least they kind of halfway plan on addressing. So here's what's going on, or not, not what's going on, or what's not going on in Albany. Well, we have the marijuana legalization, and that would legalize the use of recreational marijuana statewide. While the issue has been a priority for Democrats all year, uh, lawmakers and the governor have to bridge differences between each other and within each chamber on taxation, licensing, and how the proceeds would be used. So it's also still up in the air as to whether the state Senate has the votes to pass marijuana legalization in any form. And the governor told reporters yesterday that getting it done remains possible, but unlikely. He says, I'm not extraordinarily hopeful. So that's how that one's going also. Uh, As I said, the Senate still has to vote on driver's licenses for undocumented aliens. So that's still on the, the table. Also, what else is going on or not going on? Climate change. Democrats in both chambers are aiming to codify the state's climate change policy uh, through the Climate Protection Act. And that would require that the state eliminate its greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. The ambitious goals have attracted criticism from Cuomo. He says, uh, what I don't want to do is give people dates and goals that we cannot make. So don't be too ambitious. So they want to uh, eliminate grass, greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Uh, that's only, what, in the, uh, 31 years or something? So we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes. So that's, uh, that's how that one's going. Also, criminal justice reform. The budget included new limits on cash bail and uh, other criminal justice reforms, but lawmakers are still looking to pass several other plans. And this includes legislation that would restrict the use of solitary confinement. And uh, also, uh, let me see, there is a plan to give automatic parole to elderly inmates. In other words, if you reach a certain age, you're out. Okay, that'll be good. And uh, (laughs) what else, what else? Uh, Sexual harassment. There are a number of bills that would uh, change the current state severe and pervasive standard to prove sexual harassment. And that's been a top priority for the governor in recent days. He says uh, the, uh, he wants to pass a bill, he wants the legislature to pass a bill that would reduce the severity of an offense needed to be considered harassment and would increase the statute of limitations for sexual assault in the second and third degrees. He uh, told the legislators, uh, you will disrespect women in this state if you don't pass legislation on sexual harassment and the statute of limitations on rape. And there's, let me see, there's another one, the number of bills uh, dealing with LGBTQ uh, rights. That's in there. How about religious exemptions for vaccinations? That too. And then there's what? We have uh, labor. There's a deal on expanding the use of the prevailing wage, and that appears likely before the end of the session, which, of course, as I said, ends next Wednesday. But the final details will determine whether it's a big win for organized labor. So that's still... Oh, also, uh, a deal appears increasingly unlikely on a bill that would dramatically increase the labor rights of farm workers statewide. Those supporters rallied outside the Capitol June, uh, let me see, or yesterday. Okay, let me see what else. The, uh, 
the proposal would negatively affect family farms by giving workers overtime pay and the right to strike. And we've had Assemblyman, or well, Brian's had Assemblyman Phil Pomisano on a number of times, and he is strongly, strongly against that. He says it would destroy the family farm in New York State. And because farming is the state's number one industry, believe it or not, it's New York State's number one industry. If you ask anybody outside of New York, what is New York's number one industry? They were, I don't know what they say. But I don't think they say agriculture, but it is. It's our number one uh, industry. What else? Uh, there is a bill that would, uh, let me see, uh, address the admissions process for New York City's specialized high schools. Didn't even know there was uh, such a thing. Oh, yesterday, uh, I mentioned that uh, there's a bill that would decriminalize prostitution. <laughs> Yes, sir, that goes along with the uh, heroin injection sites, I guess. And uh, also, that appears unlikely to pass this year. And I believe that's about it. So those are the big issues facing lawmakers between now and next Wednesday. So it should be a lively week. And from Albany, we go to... This is, this is kind of interesting. <clears throat> For countless Americans, living in their vehicles has become the new normal. And that comes from a blog, the End of the American Dream blog, by Tyler Durden. And he says, uh, once again, countless numbers of Americans will sleep in their vehicles this evening. And this is a problem that's been getting worse with each passing year. According to HUD, the homeless population in the United States hit 552,830. That's more than half a million in 2018. But many think the uh, true number, he says, is actually a lot higher because if they're homeless, how do you count them? Right? <laughs> if somebody's homeless and they're living in their car, how, how are you going to count them? So even if the HUD figure is, uh, is uh, accurate, it's still a great national tragedy to have such a high number of homeless. And a lot of them are leaving, uh, living in their vehicles. A survey that was conducted in the Seattle area last year found that the number of people living in their vehicles had ridden more, has risen more than half over the past 12 months. I wonder what's going on out there. Who knows? Anyway, according to a report that was just recently released, approximately 16,500 people are currently living in their vehicles in the city of Los Angeles. And I read, when was this? I think it was last week sometime, that Los Angeles has approximately 69,000 homeless people. You think of Los Angeles as, you know, oranges, sunshine, there's the ocean, beaches and all that. A lot of those people are, I mean, 69,000 homeless people in Los Angeles. And another city out there, B Berkeley, <laughs> good old liberal Berkeley, uh, there are so many homeless people in Berkeley that they're living in tree houses. And the city, <laughs> and the city of Berkeley... As liberal as it is, says, you know, we really can't have people living in tree houses up in trees. So they're trying to get these people out of those tree houses. I don't know where they're going to, I don't know where they're going to sleep, I suppose, on the streets. Or, and this is Berkeley. So, you know, you have a nice liberal state and then you have a lot, a whole bunch of really homeless people. And there you go. I don't know. It's kind of weird. There's a story here on this, on this blog about a guy who uh, was living in his vehicle for almost two, two years while attending college in California. And he says, I really didn't think of myself as homeless. He's 21 years old. And he was attending Foothill College in Los Altos Hills. That's in the Silicon Valley. It really, actually, really, it's the Santa Clara Valley, but now it's called the Silicon Valley. Okay, fine. Anyway, this guy worked 14 hours a day as a valet for Tesla, parking employees' cars, but couldn't meet the requirement by many landlords that his monthly income total three times the monthly rent. He says, I was completely and totally embarrassed by it at first. At the time, I strongly disagreed with calling myself homeless because I thought a car could be thought of as a home. But now, but now I see it as one of the same. And a survey of, let's see, this, this is really interesting stuff. A survey of nearly 86,000 students taken last fall 
by uh, the Hope Center for College and Justice found that homelessness affected 18% of respondents attending two-year colleges and 14% of those attending four-year institutions. In the state of California alone, approximately 399,000 two-year college students reported some period of homelessness in the previous year. 399,000, and a fifth of them indicated that they had slept in their vehicles. So what's the state of California doing about all this? Well, they passed a bill (laughs) that would require every two-year college in the state to provide a safe parking lot where homeless students can sleep in their cars overnight. Well, that's one way to approach it, I guess. I don't know. So it's got to be pretty nasty out there. I mean, the people living in tree houses and living on the streets and 69,000 homeless people in in Los Angeles. Wow, we. Anyway, you know, I interviewed somebody. When was it? It was quite quite a long time ago, about 20 years ago. And he said that there's, uh, you wouldn't really think it, but there are a lot of homeless people in Hornell. A lot of homeless people in Steubank County as a whole. But what he called them was the revolving homeless, which I thought was pretty brilliant. He called them the revolving homeless. They have no permanent address. They live for a week with one family, and then maybe a week with another friend, and then they move and they'll live a couple of days with somebody else, and then they'll move again and live a week with somebody else. So they just kind of keep revolving around, and they have no permanent home. So you really wouldn't think of Steuben County as having a homeless problem. But when you consider that, yeah, I guess maybe maybe it does have a homeless problem. As not Maybe not quite as bad as California, okay? Not quite that bad, but still pretty bad. And speaking of California, we uh, let me see here. Uh, this is this is uh, this is cute. Yeah, this is San Francisco. Twelve San Francisco cops are suing the city, arguing that they were passed over for promotions because of their race. And the officers are white. So that's 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 San Francisco. Okay, Oberlin College. Overland College must pay a bakery, this is from CNN, Overland College must pay a bakery $11 million in libel lawsuit, jurors say. An Ohio jury has ordered Overland College to pay $11 million to a bakery which said it was libeled and wrongfully accused of racially profiling students. The case stems from the November uh, November 2016 arrest of three black Oberlin students at Gibson's Bakery in Market near the college's campus in Oberlin, Ohio. One student, Jonathan Aladdin, how's that for a last name, Aladdin, Hmm. was accused of attempted robbery for allegedly trying to, quote, steal beer or otherwise illegally obtain wine, uh, steal wine or otherwise illegally obtain wine from the bakery. And how many bakeries sell wine? I don't know. Anyway, uh, according to the defamation lawsuit, he would eventually confess in a written statement to buying alcohol illegally. And there were two other suspects who were arrested and accused of misdemeanor assault. And after that, Oberlin staff members tried to discredit the family-owned bakery, the lawsuit says. Oberlin College staff and students engaged in demonstrations in front of Gibson's bakery following the arrest of the three students. The suit also said Oberlin Vice President and Dean of Students Meredith Raimondo and other college staff members handed out hundreds of copies of a flyer to the neighborhood and the media stating that Gibson's Bakery and its owners racially profiled and discriminated against the three students. The court documents include a copy of the flyer which included the words, Don't Buy. This is a racist establishment with a long account of racial profiling and discrimination, the flyer read, according to the lawsuit. And the flyer also listed 10 of the bakery's competitors and urged customers to shop there instead. And while all the business ties uh, to the college were reinstated three months later, the shop had already suffered severe consequences. 
Then these people, in written statements, said that, yes, it was true that they did what they were accused of doing. Unfortunately for the bakery, it's lost a whole bunch of business. So on Friday, last Friday, a jury found Oberlin College liable for defamation, infliction of intentional emotional distress, and intentional interference of business relationships. And Oberlin College had no comment. Hmm. So that's, uh, that's how that went. So these students did confess that, indeed, yes, they did what they were accused of doing. And by that time, the damage was done to this bakery. Alrighty, uh, we're going to take a break here and we, we, will, we will be right back. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles, here's Eddie Garcia. In the NHL Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals, saw the Blues beat the Bruins 4-1. to St. Louis rookie goalie Jordan Bennington made 32 saves in net. Ryan O'Reilly scored a goal for the fourth straight game. He was named the Conn Smythe Trophy winner as playoff MVP. St. Louis finished the postseason 10-3 and on the road as they clinch in Boston and end a 52-year drop by winning the first Stanley Cup title in franchise history. News from the NBA were the results of the MRI on the right leg of Golden State Warriors star forward Kevin Durant were announced and is feared he did suffer a ruptured Achilles tendon in Game 5 of the NBA Finals. Durant had surgery on Wednesday. The recovery time is expected to be around nine months, barring any setbacks. In baseball games of note, the Phillies were shut up at the Diamondbacks 2-0, while the Braves walk off with an 8-7 win over the Pirates. Atlanta moves one game up on Philadelphia for the NL East lead. Cubs clobber the Rockies 10-1. Brewers beat the Astros 6-3. Milwaukee remains a half game up on Chicago for the NL Central lead. New to golf or seasoned veteran? You'll enjoy the casual, relaxed atmosphere of Vanderview Golf Course. Two miles from downtown Alfred on Waterwells Road, Vanderview is a nine-hole, executive-length golf course with a driving range on one side of the road and the course on the other. Family-friendly and fun recreation for everyone. Greens fees are one price for unlimited play, $9.50. High school students, only $5. Children 12 and under with an adult, no charge. You can play up to 18 holes or nine holes with a cart and get the second nine holes at no additional charge. Ladies and senior golfers who don't hit the long ball, Vanderview's got the executive length that's just right for your game. And new this year, a season pass for only $100. That's a lot of golfing fun for a very little bit of money. Vanderview Golf Course, two miles from downtown Alfred on Waterwells Road. Vanderview Golf Course. From the Fox Business Network, Target is taking on Amazon and Walmart in the shipping wars. It will now offer same-day delivery for $9.99 per order on thousands of items. Delivery will be from ship to company Target purchased nearly two years ago. Target previously was offering shipped services for $14 a month or $99 a year. The program covers 65,000 items. Lululemon Athletica says sales of its leggings and jogging clothes were stronger than expected in the spring quarter. It is raising its forecast for the year. Online sales increased 33%. Cybersecurity company CrowdStrike shares rallied in its first day of trading, closing at $58 a share on the NASDAQ. CrowdStrike was priced at $34. The Dow was down 43 yesterday. NASDAQ dropped 29. S&P lost 5. With the Fox Business Report, I'm Jenny Cosola. You don't want to mess with the IRS. They have the power to garnish your paycheck, levy your bank accounts, and even take your home or business. That's all true. But thankfully, they're offering a way out, the Fresh Start Initiative. If you qualify, you could save thousands. The experts at Optima Tax Relief will fight to get you the best possible tax settlement, and they have an A-plus rating with the BBB. Call Optima for your free consultation. Call 800-410-6744. 800-410-6744. Optima Tax Relief. Today at Simmons Rockwell Nissan in Horseheads and Hornell, drive away in a new Nissan Rogue lease for only $2.19 a month. A new 2019 all-wheel drive Nissan Rogue SV model with 17-inch alloys, heated power seat, and remote start. Lease for $219 a month for 36 months. Only $2,500 cash or trade. Tax and DMV fees are due at signing. Shop Simmons-Rockwell.com. And here we are again. Now, uh, before I do anything else, i got to remind you, tomorrow is Flag Day. Okay? And the, more on that on Friday. And also, Sunday is Father's Day. Remember, Dad, and more about that on Friday, too. 
And Monday, oh, I love this, the Almond Historical Society is holding a strawberry festival at the Hagedorn House, right by the light there. And we've gone a number of times, and boy, it is just, it's wonderful. Uh, wow, strawberries, you got to love strawberries. So that's a couple of things are going on real soon here. Okay, <laughs> this is from where I find, on Bloomberg. Uh, this is in India. An Indian court sentenced a business class passenger to life in jail after he was found guilty of placing a hijacking note in the washroom of a flight. I can't pronounce his name. Anyway, he's 38 years old, and he was also fined 50 million rupees. Now, how much is that in real money? $720,000, okay? And uh, so he's uh, life in jail, or, or life in prison, I guess, and a pretty hefty fine. So he leaves his note in the washroom, and a flight attendant sees it, and he says the note reads something like, uh, this plane is not going to, uh, where is it headed? It was headed to New Delhi from Mumbai. And he says, no, we're not, we're not to go to New Delhi. We're going to go here. And because there are hijackers on the board, and if this plane doesn't do what I say, then we're going to start killing people. Okay? So it turns out <laughs> he was a platinum member of Jet Airways loyalty program and a jeweler by trade. So this guy may have wanted to ground the airline to woo a stewardess. So he wanted a score there. And who he said uh, he was hoping that she would then approach him for a job. Okay? So he's trying to score with the stewardess, and he winds up life in prison at a hefty fine. Okay, uh, all right. That, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.